Hey y'all, this video is a spoof and or inspired by Swag Kage in his series of explaining Naruto abilities. His series will be linked down below, but in this video I will be explaining one of the most OP abilities in the Chinese anti-hero web novel, Reverend Insanity. I know this video isn't going to get tons of crazy views because, you know, Naruto has huge appeal and Chinese web novels just aren't that popular. Also, considering that the fandom largely considers this particular novel a modern classic, I'm also kind of spoiling the novel by explaining the later half of the novel's power structures and how this ability works. A lot of the world is interesting because of the magic system the world uses, and to explain this power, I'd pretty much need to cover the fundamentals of the world and its magic system. But nevertheless, I still think this would be a very entertaining video to consume if you aren't in the know about this novel because uh, this ability is just really OP. Let's get right into it and if you haven't already, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm because it's my dream to make this a medium sized channel. In the world of Reverend Insanity, mages known as Goo Masters use magic to achieve power and assert their will in the universe. These mages are not inherently magical except for the mana that they produce and completely rely on magic artifacts known as Goo for the magic that they use. Goo are broken down into 9 different ranks which reflect their power, usage requirements, and overall ability. In addition to that, Goos of any rank can be refined to increase their rank or reverse refined to decrease their rank to either power up or take someone else's goo and make it more suitable for your abilities. Also, goo aren't just magical artifacts, they're actually living magical insects of the world, but the more magical they get, the more varied they become in appearance. Rank 1 to 3 are almost always bug or nature related. As their power increases, while they are still technically alive and they have to be fed and taken care of, they may instead come in the shapes of swords, hearts, eyebrows, literally anything. Goo appear in nature most often in very very low ranks, but they can artificially be refined to much higher ranks, but to do so requires a deep understanding and attainment level of Goo refinement, which is a specific and trainable skill. Just like Goo, Goo Masters are also broken down in ranks 1 to 9. There is no rank 10. Rank 9 humans are already incredibly rare. In fact, there have only been 9 or 10 in the hundreds of thousands of years of human history, and oftentimes, their very existence threatens the stability of the universe itself. Even the greatest figures in history only ever dream of becoming rank 8. In addition, most Goo Masters simply stall out at rank 1 or rank 2. Rank 3 is often a gate that is never opened for most Goo Masters in this world. The world these sorcerers live in is split into five regions, Northern Plains, Southern Border, Eastern Sea, Western Desert, and Central Continent. Since this novel was written in China, you can imagine Central Continent being China with colder and more barren areas in the north, sandy deserts in the west, and oceans to the east. In addition to the physical world, there were also nine heavens which simultaneously existed in the sky but are more similar to spiritual planes of existence that overlap each other, with different colors representing their environments and natural flora and fauna. Of course, this is pretty high level stuff and most mortals won't know the existence of the nine heavens, but it's important for later, so you get to learn about it early. The nine heavens were known as white heaven, red heaven, orange heaven, yellow heaven, green heaven, azure heaven, blue heaven, purple heaven, and black heaven. Basically the colors of the rainbow plus black and white. These were vast areas with significantly more powerful magical beasts and plants living in the heavens, but due to the violent and chaotic nature of the world's history, all of them were mysteriously destroyed except for white and black heaven. Goo Masters use their mana pool, known as their primeval aperture, to refine the aperture walls to rank up and produce higher quality primeval essence, which is just more powerful mana, to control more powerful goo. By nurturing the walls of the primeval aperture, the mana they produce becomes higher in quality and thus able to nurture the aperture even further. However, this method is only applicable up to rank 5, but that doesn't matter so much as the act of cultivating your aperture actually spends the amount of mana that you have in reserve, and so most people don't even have the talent necessary to regenerate their mana quickly enough to ever reach rank 3. There are exceptions though, as if you're filthy rich, the currency of the world known as primeval stones can act as a mana regen item, but even reaching rank 3 through wealth alone isn't all that great if in your everyday life 
you are barely able to store and produce enough mana to use it freely. Rank 6 is a transformative stage where Goo Masters ascend using a secret method where afterwards they begin referring to themselves as Goo Immortals. The method of ascending to a Goo Immortal is complicated and also not necessary to understand for this video, but up until now, mortal Goo Masters, while very powerful, still lived a relatively human life. They had limited physical strength unless using specific strength path Goo. They had to sleep, drink, and eat and they had to manage their own resources in living spaces and protect those resources as good as possible from enemy clans, villages, and sects, as well as lone cultivators who may be more prone to thievery and raiding. Most of them can't even fly, as each person only has a limited amount of time and resources. They only can train a specific path like fire, strength, water, or earth, because after all, these people usually serve as a military force for their kingdoms, and while they are superior to non-magic mortals in a class sense, most Goo Masters use magic for its combat ability. However, things change when you become an immortal, as time and space don't impact you the way that they impact everyone else. Mortals are toughing it out in the real world, but by ascending to an immortal, you refine your aperture to such a degree that instead of producing primeval essence, your once ethereal aperture expands and solidifies to create an area of a few acres of land while remaining the same size on the Goo Immortal's body, essentially breaking the rules of space by being bigger on the inside. In addition, time flows significantly faster inside their immortal aperture than in the outside world. This is the basis of immortal cultivation, and developing their immortal aperture is imperative to developing themselves as an immortal. Goo Immortals keep their belongings, their goo, and their refinement material all growing inside the natural landscape of their immortal aperture known as a blessed land. The talent of your natural aptitude in primeval essence production, aka mana production and mana storage, now influence the size and the flow of time in your aperture. The gifted get to surpass the average yet again, as the rate of time in their apertures is much faster than the outside world and the greater your talent for mana production, the greater the rate of time is in your new immortal aperture. This is also true for the amount of inner space your blessed land contains. The greater your capacity in storing mana, the more space your blessed land will contain. For instance, someone with low aptitude may only have the size of a farm with a few acres of farmable land. This is already quite versatile, but someone with extremely high talent may have a massive blessed land comparable maybe to the size of New York State. The size and flow of time is useful for growing immortal materials in your blessed land for refinement materials, healing items, combat consumables, or simply to sell to others for income. Even better, Primeval Essence, the mana used for controlling rank 5 and lower goo, now becomes obsolete, and goo immortals effectively have unlimited amounts of mana, meaning any rank 6 immortal can without question crush a rank 5 Goo Master with brute force. As with unlimited mana, they can simply activate thousands of rank 5 or lower Goo at once and obliterate anything in their path. Being an immortal is great. At this stage, immortals are quite OP. Unfortunately, reaching rank 6 angers Heaven. Heaven therefore attempts to destroy the immortal invoking recurring supernatural disasters inside the immortal's aperture, attempting to destroy the resources he's trying to grow during recurring intervals of time. Depending on the rate of time in your immortal aperture, every few years, 10 earthly calamities occur before you are faced with one heavenly tribulation. Passing the tribulation by destroying it awards the user Dalmarks, which is the new cultivation resource once you're an immortal. While they technically exist for mortals too, the amount accumulated in each Goo Master's body is usually so small it just doesn't matter. With the appearance of these Dalmarks after passing each tribulation, they reinforce the specific path that person cultivates, so a Fire Immortal passes a Fire Tribulation which grants him additional Dalmarks in his aperture, which contributes towards his progress of rank 7. In addition, accumulating Dalmarks that correlate with his path also improves the effectiveness of his abilities and reduces the immortal essence cost of using fire-related immortal goo. 
With a deep accumulation of Dao marks, Goo Immortals are able to circumvent the high cost of special Immortal mana using rank 6 and higher Immortal Goo, which further increases their capabilities from simply destroying something with magic to completely absurd capabilities like rewriting reality and traveling through time. The downside, however, is that Dao marks conflict with each other, so it's very unlikely for someone to cultivate both fire and water abilities as unless you are extremely exceptional, your Dao marks will cancel each other out and you will only ever get mediocre, below average performance from both paths. Over time, as Gu Immortals rank up, their tribulations become more and more frequent as well as more and more deadly until they inevitably spend all their resources protecting their body and eventually are destroyed by the will of heaven. With this as context, we can finally start explaining the superiority of the 9-5 Sovereign Immortal Body. Given the fact that in this series, magic is not innate and must come from a specific goo or combination of goo, you can probably guess that this body was created with an immortal goo. The immortal goo that produced this supernatural body was refined specifically by a legendary rank 9 goo immortal known as Spectral Soul Demonic Venerable, who used his immense power and research into understanding a person's physical existence as well as their soul to create a new vessel to allow much more efficient cultivation in an attempt to evade the punishment from heaven. He used his life's knowledge to create an artificial goo, one that would never occur in nature, that would grow the user a new body that far surpassed the capabilities of a natural-born human. First and foremost, the user of this goo, the Sovereign Immortal Fetus Goo, has their soul transferred into the goo, which then transforms into a child that quickly grows into an adolescent youth in a matter of minutes. Before anything else, this do body is already leveled up to rank 6, so yeah, if you weren't lucky enough to become one of the incredibly few people to wield unlimited mana, fly, and have a mini world inside your aperture, congrats you are now above all mortals. In addition, however, the body is already tempered with hundreds of Dao marks of different paths. This means that unlike mortals and immortals, you don't even need to temper your body with defensive goo that would make your skin more tough or raise your inert strength. This has been done for you already. In addition, none of the Dao marks you obtain conflict at all. The user of the Sovereign Immortal Body has the ability to use, study, and cultivate all paths without any negative repercussions. This is huge, as all Immortals must rely on each other to specialize in different areas. Offensive Goo Immortals are a military might. Defensive Goo Immortals protect Immortal society. Wisdom Goo Immortals protect the future against other Wisdom Goo Immortals for the sake of strategic advantage. With the Sovereign Immortal Body, however, if you have the resources and time to cultivate all paths, you could quickly rise up in the world without being hindered by conflict of interests within your society. Next off, the blessed land in the aperture of this body isn't just some swampy shack. It's the 9-5 Sovereign Immortal Aperture, and while a talented individual who becomes an immortal may obtain an aperture the size of New Jersey or Rhode Island at best, the entire space inside the Sovereign Immortal Aperture totals 335,000 kilometers of space, which for comparison, is similar to the size of Texas plus Oklahoma. And is it just empty space in your aperture? No, the space in the Sovereign Immortal Aperture is broken up as a replica of the five regions and nine heavens, meaning you can replicate the local economies of the outside world due to there being an environmental replica. And if you have the seeds or eggs of the legendary plants and beasts that used to reside in the Nine Heavens, you can also raise an army of heavenly beings on a level far more powerful than all mortals and most immortals, which can be released at any time to wreak havoc in the real world. Insanely powerful already, but do you remember the flow of time I mentioned before? The Sovereign Immortal Aperture's rate of time compared to the outside world is 60 to 1, meaning one day in the outside world equals two months from within the aperture. So while the massive aperture can't contain the actual size of the outside world, the incredibly different rate in time means resources can be grown much faster and efficiently from within. Already, you can see how simply in terms of size and time, the aperture provides incomparable benefits to the user, who with this alone would inevitably surpass other immortals and could easily reach rank 8 if they can manage their tribulations correctly. 
Fortunately for you, I've left the best part out of this the whole time. This body was made by a demonic venerable, rank 9, one of the rarest beings in all of existence, whose sole purpose in life was to defy heaven and free himself from the fate of every other living being in the world. He was able to create an otherworldly body that defied the logic of the world by having an incomparably developed aperture, in addition to managing a way to temper all Dao marks in a way that they don't conflict. This was a leading principle to one of his core goals. I introduce you to the final power, the small swallow the big. In nature, there is always a bigger fish. The natural cycle of life is to be consumed up the food chain indefinitely. But Spectral Soul Demon Venerable wanted to defy nature. His magnum opus in developing this body was to enable the user to devour the immortal apertures of other Gu Immortals, including higher level apertures developed by Gu Immortals of a much higher rank than the user, and by doing so, absorb their accumulated Dao marks, annex their resources, and absorb additional space to grow the already enormous size of the Sovereign Immortal Aperture. And ultimately, by devouring the Dao marks of others, the user will bypass the earthly calamities and heavenly tribulations that would otherwise destroy their inner world and simultaneously they can rank up to 7, 8, and eventually rank 9. With all of these powers, the user can quickly reach a level where they can go on a murdering spree, killing anybody who is weak, devouring all useful resources, benefiting from others' hard work, and keeping the resources for themselves. Cultivation that would normally take thousands of years, impossible for nearly all humans who have a natural lifespan of 100 years, can take place in a matter of months, quickly gaining enough Dao marks to devour the Lord sitting on top of heaven, becoming the small fish that swallows the big fish, and defying the will of heaven to become the most powerful being in existence, with all methods of all paths available to the user with unlimited resources to draw from, and stand against the face of heaven who is constantly trying to destroy the unbalanced, overpowered existence that you are. By becoming the inhabitant of this body, you start an unending path of bloodshed to sate an unending hunger, an unquenchable thirst for more, as you follow in the footsteps of its creator, becoming an unstoppable demon god. This video is shaping up to be one of my longer ones, but as I slowly learned more and more how OP this ability actually was, I kept getting the idea that it would be entertaining as an explanation video similar to Swag Kage's explaining the Renegon. I did skip over some minor benefits that would take longer to explain, and also some weaknesses that would take even longer to explain, but I hope that if this at all piqued your interest, you check out either the novel or the manga adaptation of this series, as it's a great anti-hero novel and a fascinating and beautiful world to explore. If this video does well, I wouldn't mind doing another one explaining other powers and abilities, or also going into more detail about the world of the novel and some of its characters as a way to open up the media to greater audiences. If you like this video, please tap the like button if you haven't already done so. I upload three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I am desperately trying to grow this to a medium-sized channel. I am the Content Savant, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.